Welcome back to another episode of the Know Your Power podcast. I am your host, Julia Renee. And Kendall Graboff. And today, guys, it is episode two of Gym Girl Basics. So like we said in a couple episodes ago, however many that might be, we're starting a little mini series that we're calling Gym Girl Basics. So for anybody that's like new here or new to fitness, you can go back or to the basics. Or experienced and just needs like a refresher. Or just you need refresher. a refresh because honestly, this was a refresher for me. Yeah. Like writing about this, like I know all of these things and I forget how many things there are to like consider when you're starting your fitness journey. Then I was like, oh, okay, I need this refresher. But today we're going to go over the nutrition basics. So I tried my best to... Make Julia this wrote short. a novel <laughs> <laughs> to make it short. But like, as I was writing it, I texted Kendall and I was like, this episode is going to be a lot longer than I thought because it's just hard to like put nutrition and like the steps to get to your goal in like a really tiny episode. So yeah. Um, the we're going to try to be concise. Yeah, we're yeah, we're going to try. <laughs> AKA Julia. Um, because I tend to I think I do. I go on tangents that aren't even related to the topic. That's kind of my role on this pod. Is tangent different than ramble? I think you can, uh, I think they're the same, but like in context, you'll ramble about the topic and I'll ramble about like something (laughs) that happened last Tuesday. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Does that make sense? Yeah, it kind of does. It kind of does. Yeah. Like we're doing right now. Yeah. (laughs) Basically. Anyways, I can't see my paper because I'm like, it's blocking me. Your eyelashes are too long. They do. Like, my eyelashes (laughs) provide shade over my eyes. We can hold the papers like newscasters. Like today on Gym Girl Basics, we are going (laughs) to talk about, my name's Julie Renee, signing off. Anyway, so I really wanted to do some kind of like disclaimers before I started because there's a lot of things that popped up for me when I was creating this outline for the episode that I was like, I wish I knew. It's almost like a, another mini myth busters. But like, first of all, I really wanted to talk about like the hiccups that might happen like along the way when you first start your nutrition journey. There's going to be a lot of trial and error. You're going to probably get a little bit frustrated. And this is if you don't have a coach. So the reason we're making this episode is for people that that don't want to get a coach or maybe they just can't like fit it into their budget. But once I got a coach, all of this was simplified and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I don't have to do then any of this. Then you don't need to know like the specifics or why you're doing something. You just do it. Exactly. But, but I do think it's still like good to understand like why you're implementing certain things. It is. That's why it's important. Like if you do have a coach that hopefully like they'll, they'll teach you some of these things so yeah. that when you don't work with them, you can do it on your own. Yes. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of trial and error, stuff like that. Um, there's going to be information overload. Like once you do start researching for yourself, I remember when I, I did. you experience some of us making this. Yeah, I, I I experienced this making this because I was like, oh, then I can talk about this. But then I was like this. I was like, oh, that's just too much stuff. But I remember like listening to podcasts and and a bunch of different YouTubers and everybody was so different that it'd be like, wait, she's doing keto. He's doing pe- uh, 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 a pescatarian. Uh, I almost <laughs> forgot that word. He's <laughs> pescatarian. <laughs> and then you try following like all of them like on different days and it's like well of course you're not going to see results Literally. you're not even like actually fully testing out the diet you're just going like one fad diet to another fad diet and you're not giving your body time to like even see if it works oh and that's a huge thing is is this is that you let literally start spinning your tires because maybe you do like your research and you're like, Oh, I got my research. (laughs) And then you start your journey and two weeks in, not even you're like, Oh, I don't see results. Okay. Let me go back to the internet and let me try a different kind of diet. And you really never give your body a chance to see if that thing even worked. Literally, uh, it takes at least two to three weeks for what you're doing to your body to start being like, oh, hey, this is what's happening. Yeah. It doesn't like instantly eliminate out the ice cream you had the day before you started this meal plan. Like no. that, it doesn't just erase anything. Oh, yeah. I also think another little disclaimer to add in the beginning, this is nutrition. This is not a diet. We're not telling you how to lose fat fast. Like this is not like we're more so talking about like how to build a healthy, sustainable, long-term lifestyle for yourself. Not like oh, like follow these little rules and you're going to drop 10 pounds in a week because that's not what the goal of your diet should be. Oh, exactly. And look, most of the time it's going to start you feeling that way. Like most of the time we start this thing out of like a quote unquote, like for a vain reason. Yeah. Because I I did too. And then now looking back, it's like, okay, I wish I would have just taken the like slower approach. I didn't slash all my calories and Mm -hmm. like do a bunch of cardio because maybe I would be a lot further than I am right now. But 
you know, you can't go back in time anyway. So, yeah, yeah those are just some disclaimers that we wanted to talk about before. And look, you might not listen. And you might just go and do the crash route. And if that's what you need to do. We'll see you in three months we'll when you come you back here. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> and want to learn we're the right way. <laughs> we're trying to help you. And again, we're not like nutritionists. We're just competitive bodybuilders. We help yeah. coach other people for like lifestyle diets. So we know what we're talking about. But again, like if you have like really certain like dietary restrictions or if you want to get a coach, like we recommend like fully getting someone that can suit this to you because we're talking pretty generally on most things. Yeah, because once you do get a coach, like they, they can take all this guesswork out for yeah. you. That's the benefit of getting a coach is that you don't have to do all this on your own. So let's go into number one, and that is to first just track what you're eating. So a lot of times when you start your fitness journey, people don't actually know how much or how little they're actually eating. I remember the first time that I actually got with a coach. She said, okay, just, just track your meals for the day. And I was like, first of all, how do you track things? What does that mean? And then, so she kind of showed me how to do it on like my fitness pal. And I was like, oh, okay, like this is, I guess, relatively simple. And I tracked what I was eating and I was like, oh my God, I'm eating like a thousand calories. But what I, like when I was eating, it was like random parts in the day. It was yeah. like little, like things that I would just like pick up. There weren't actual meals. So the reason that this tip is so important is because you need to know how much you're eating now in order to figure out how much you are going to eat. Because when we go into the next tip, it's going to be really important because a lot of women in particular are not eating to the amount of calories, the potential that they could be. And that was me. I was eating like a thousand calories. And when I started going with my coach, she slowly started increasing them to where I was eating. I was like 120 pounds and I was eating almost 2000 calories, which is a lot for that weight. And I never thought that that was what I was going to be able to do. I was like, oh, isn't God. it nice? Ooh. It was great. Yeah. You're like, oh shit. Like I can eat, like I get to eat like six meals a day. Like how nice is that? Versus like, we think we need to starve ourselves to see results when in reality, you just need to fuel your body. It was right wild. Way. And of yeah. course, like I built muscle a lot faster doing it that way. And that was my goal. I was so frustrated because I wanted to build muscle and I was like, okay, I'm spinning my tires and I literally budgeted so that I can have a coach. And this is when I was like assisting at a salon. I was working so, so many hours a day and I literally was buying like the cheapest food Mm -hmm. that I possibly could, like the bags of rice, you know, things that were all super cheap so that I can pay for my coach. Yeah. Cause I just really wanted that. So track what you're eating now, just like Go on my fitness pal or whatever you use to track your food, track what you're eating so you that you can see. Also, how much. I wanna add with that, I always have my clients when they start with me do that. I, I go like, okay, like next three days let's mm-hmm. track because sometimes you are super inconsistent and you might have a low day and then a super high day. So sure. I take three random days out of their week. I tell them to also, if they're cooking at home, to track how much oil and butter they're using. Because Very I feel true. like the average American like just dumps some oil into the pan to like cook their chicken. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, a lot of that cooks out, but also like if you're pouring like a cup of oil in there, that's like 500 extra calories you yeah. didn't even know you were having. So you might think you're eating like these small, really healthy meals and you're like, why am I not losing weight? That could still be a factor, like little added calories that you don't realize you're having. Maybe you're drinking yeah. soda and it's not like Coke Zero, it's like full sugar Coke. And that's so many extra calories that you don't even like think about. It's just part of your daily routine. It's, it, that's so true. And like coffee creamers and like mm-hmm. going to Starbucks and getting your coffee. like Frappuccinos, the, especially. Yeah. Those, like, oh, girl. So high don't, in calories. Don't even. Those are my fave. <laughs> I've never had one. I'm like, give me a Trenta ca- uh, Frappuccino. Yes. It's like yeah. coffee smoothie. It's like literally yes. a milkshake. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, that's what I would do when I'm, yeah. when I was starting my well, fitness Well, no one's journey. taught that that's unhealthy. Or maybe, you know, and that's just like your one thing that day, but then you can still build a healthy lifestyle around that one thing. That's because I just had no idea what macros were, what, what calories were, how things added up because I never just took a minute to like, look at a label and be like, Oh, blah, blah. That's how much this is. I I never did that. I just ate. Um, and then once I started having a goal, then I was like, okay, I actually need to start portioning things out. And then once you get older, your body isn't the same as when you were like, obviously a kid and you were working out a crap ton and you're like, Oh no, I got to watch things. (laughs) You're saying that I, that I can't have a Trenta Frappuccino every day and a burger every day and be leany skinny. 
Okay, but yeah. <laughs> the next point I can I can start it off for us oh. is caloric intake. So once you know how much you are eating, you kind of need to find out how much you should be eating. And how you find this is finding out your BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate, which in very basic terms is if you were to lay on the couch all day and your body was just doing its like normal human functions, maintaining homeostasis, how many calories are you burning at rest? Mm -hmm. And then that is kind of your base amount. Mm -hmm. So say you have a faster metabolism, say like you could lay on the couch all day and burn 2,100 calories. Right. And then you're like, okay, but I'm eating 2,100 calories and now I want to lose weight. What do you do? You can either drop your food a little lower to create a deficit, or you can get off the couch and start exercising <laughs> to create a deficit. Or what most people do is do a little bit of both. So you don't have to super under eat and you don't have to do five hours of cardio. Mm. You kind of find that balance of, okay, if I eat a little less in this meal and I start going for walks, that's already creating a deficit, which is needed for your body to lose weight. Again, if losing weight's your goal, it could be the opposite. You could be trying to gain muscle. You mm -hmm. may need to start to get up and weight lift more because you can't really gain muscle if you're laying on the couch. Um, exactly. And then also start eating more because you don't want a deficit if you're trying to gain muscle. You can't gain muscle by not eating enough. You need to fuel. Oh yeah, for sure. And when you look up these BMR calculators, again, this goes into like that little warning that we talked about. It's very generalized. It's literally like your weight, your height, your gender, you know. I did an actual BMR test mm -hmm. at Lifetime Fitness. Mm -hmm. If you have access to that, so, mm -hmm. so knowledgeable for me because I found out that my body burns more fats than it does carbs. It's oh. just genetic makeup. It also could be my age, my activity level, all these things. But that taught me like, oh, I can eat higher fats compared to maybe like say Julia who mm -hmm. can eat higher carbs mm -hmm. and will burn the same amount. Yeah. But if I eat a really high carb diet, I tend to hold on to my weight more. So if wow. you can get that done, get it done. But if not, yeah, online, there's free That's calculators really cool. everywhere. I think I used yeah. to use Katie Hearns. She has one like oh, on her website. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, but it literally will just give you like a number. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give you like your actual macro breakdown, which we'll go into a little bit later, but yeah, it can be kind of generalized. And that's where that wiggle room comes around and where Kendall was talking about, okay, like, are we going to lose weight? Are we going to build muscle? Where are we going to move from that number? So like, for example, throughout the rest of this episode, I'm going to use the 2000 calorie range. So mm -hmm. say you get your BMR, you go on your little calculator and it says you need 2000 calories a day. I don't know why day. I use 2100. <laughs> that was so random. I, I, yeah. I like a, like a good number. even number because math. Yes. Um, I'm really bad at math and I probably still won't be able to do it. But yeah, 2000 calories. That's what you get. And you're like, okay, so I have this number. But that's why tip number one, tracking your food is important because you might be eating a thousand calories every day. And now you know that, oh, with my weight, my height, my gender, I can be eating 2000 calories a day. You're saying I need to eat a thousand more calories. So this might be really difficult because you think that you have to eat like that much calories per day yeah. in order to like right off the bat, which can be really hard. So maybe starting from a thousand calories and going to maybe a thousand five hundred calories and then finally going up to your two thousand calorie range, which is like your maintenance, like you're yeah. just maintaining you have to what slowly your physique get there. Is. I also think it can be a little discouraging because like, yes, your BMR may say 2000 calories, but if you've been under eating for so long, mm -hmm. your body does adjust to that. Your metabolism might be a little slower than it should be. Or because it's be. literally storing food. Cause it's like, when are we going to eat again? No, yeah. It goes into starvation mode, mm -hmm. which like I could do a whole topic on that, but you need to slowly start introducing food back or vice versa. Maybe you're eating way above what you find out your maintenance is. It's so hard and you'll be so hungry because what are the hunger receptors that you gremlin <laughs> i called it gremlin we'll um, call it the, <laughs> the ghrelin gremlin, gremlin. <laughs> um your hunger receptors are going to go crazy if you just like immediately cut a thousand calories out so it's very slow true. process for all of this exactly same thing oh wow that that, that couldn't have been said in <laughs> perfectly i'm not going to even comment Thanks. because that was great <laughs> um but you're right because when i was at the like a thousand calorie mark and i went to like my coach was like, this is the potential that you have to be to eat at. She didn't just move me from like a thousand to 2000. We literally went from a thousand and then 500. And that was, that gave me the ability to actually eat more foods that have higher calories, which is typically like fats. They have yeah. higher calorie count. I love eating fats. <laughs> I do too, but my, I'm, I'm like a very moderate 
everything kind of person. We'll go mm-hmm. into that a little bit later also. But yeah, so now that we've tracked how much we're eating, you know, regularly, and now we're going, it's like, okay, we found our BMR. We know where we where we could be at. Now we want to go into like choosing our goal. Which I kind of went ahead of on this Yeah, one. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but you need to... I'm not I'm not freaking out. I'm, I'm not... I'm, not, I'm, I'm not so sorry out. for I'm going ahead of this guy. I literally didn't even look at this. I just started ranting about BMR. Um, you need to pick what you want out of your physique. Mm-hmm. Now you know how much you are eating, how much you should be eating for maintenance. But yeah. do you want to maintain? Mm-hmm. Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to gain muscle? Do you want to change your body composition and end up at the same weight again? Like you really need to assess what you want to change about yourself, if anything. Yeah, exactly. And this will kind of determine like what you do with this new calorie count you have. So say that we are at that 2000 calorie mark and my goal is like, okay, I want to go into a cut. This is where people really screw up where they're like, okay, I'm going to slash it to 1500 calories and then I'm going to start doing, you know, Cardio seven days a week, working out seven days a week when I haven't been doing anything. When yeah. really what you could have done, like at the bare minimum was, okay, I'm going to cut. I, you, you didn't even have to cut your calories. That's the thing. You could have kept it at that 2000 mark and okay, I'm going to go on a walk three or four times a week. Yeah. That has is already putting you in a deficit by adding physical activity or you can do less of the physical activity. And like you were saying earlier, kind of even out, okay, I'm going to do 1800 calories. Yeah. Let's try that for a little bit. Let's track it. Let's see if my body is losing weight. If you're losing weight too fast, then you're like, okay, I don't need to cut that many calories. If you're not losing any weight at all, then maybe you need to cut it a little bit more. This is where it gets annoying. And yeah. it's like, dude, you just, you need to be committed to this yeah. and trial and error. That's you also need to find what you're happy doing. I remember having yeah. a conversation with Zach because he was my coach at the time and I hit such a plateau before nationals and he kind of talked to me and he was like would you rather eat less and keep your cardio the same or do more cardio Mm -hmm. and eat the same and I was like I don't need food (laughs) I don't need food get me off the stairmaster I hate doing cardio with a passion and like I love like walking and doing like sprints on my own terms but being told to do two hours of stairmaster hate it. So I was like, I'd rather drop my food. Like I'm okay into going bodybuilding takes everything of course, to the extreme. I'm okay with going to an unhealthy place with my food. If it means I don't have to spend four hours at the gym. Exactly. And that's, that's, and someone might be the opposite. Someone might love running and love eating and they want to do more cardio and eat more as long as you have a deficit. And I know like we keep throwing that word around. It's essentially, are you burning more calories throughout the day than you are eating. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger and I heard that and I was like, okay, I need to burn more than I eat. I thought, I didn't realize that BMR was the thing. I didn't realize you burn so much at rest. So what I would do is like run 10 miles if I ate something that was like 200 calories. So just a reminder, our bodies are burning so much at rest. Exercise is added to that. Exactly. You're, you're, it's really easy to create a deficit if it's you're true. moving. Yeah. I mean, like today is literally my rest day. So mm-hmm. I committed to like, I'm not even going to do cardio. Usually I would even do cardios on my rest day. I'd, I'd count my rest day as being like no training, but I'm not doing anything. So today I'm just like doing my podcast. I'm doing my recovery stuff. I'm going to get my hair blow dry. I'm getting my nails done because this is my like, this is my day. But I'm not doing any quote unquote physical activity, but there is neat, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So that's, I'm burning calories right now because I'm Italian and I'm moving my hands while I'm talking and I'm like talking, being up, I'm burning calories like right now. Like I could probably read to you how many calories. I didn't even, I never thought about it, but like the little movements we do throughout the day, like you may burn like half a calorie doing like a little arm movement, but calorie. those add up. I'm an anxious person. I am constantly shaking my leg, fiddling, moving around. And I was like, this is why my metabolism's gotten faster. Is like, yeah. I cannot, I never just like sit. Mm-hmm. I never can just like rely. I'm constantly like shaking, moving, like twitching, like something. You're like anxiety helps no, my calorie burn. I'm like burning calories. because I've I'm already burned saying. 848 calories. Like and that's like wild. I haven't worked out. I've literally just gotten out of bed, put my makeup on, and I'm doing a podcast with Kendall. And I've already burned 848 calories. Do you want to plug what you're using for that? I'm using Whoop. <laughs> Do you have a code? I freaking love my Whoop. I don't know if I have a code. Oh. I thought you did. Anyway, Whoop, uh, Apple Watches, Fitbits, anything that can tell you like a deeper analysis of like your movement and how much you're burning. Those are such a useful tool for that like general BMR. Exactly. And 
just to kind of go back to, okay, we were talking about the cut. So you were talking about the cut, which is literally, okay, if that's like the goal that you want to do, you're in a deficit, which is you are burning more calories than you were eating in the day versus a bulk where you're eating more calories than you burn in a day. And then there's maintenance, like that you're literally just like maintaining what your body is. You don't necessarily like want to change your physique in the way that it looks. Now, this is where I go into people think that you have to bulk in order to put on muscle. And I really think that that's kind of like fading away. Like I really think it's fading away because this entire, um, I've, I've these past couple of, what are they called? Off seasons. I've been doing maintenance calories and have been building muscle. Yeah. So I haven't had to like overly eat and stuff myself in order to build muscle because there's no guarantee that you eating that huge excess of calories is going to turn into Moosles. That's what I call a dirty bulk too, where yeah. like people are like, as long as I'm eating 3000 calories a day, I don't care how I get it in my system. Yes. And that's when so many competitors and lifestyle people gain so much extra body fat that then they're unha- unhappy. Mm-hmm. So like, yes, you're putting on some muscle, but is the body fat you're putting on top of that worth it? Cause now your cutting season is going to be way longer. Exactly. Exactly. So, so yeah, <laughs> once you decide which one that you want to do, Hint, hint, the um, maintenance is honestly a good way to go. Yeah. And if you are at maintenance, you can just do, there's also, I mean, people also call it a lean bulk where it's like, I guess in between maintenance and quote unquote dirty bulking yeah. where you literally just like just add a little, a little bit of extra calories, maybe on your training days. And then maybe on, on your off days, you're just going back to your regular, yeah. like there's things Again, that you different can do. systems work for everyone. We're talking very generally of like deficit versus maintenance versus yeah. a slight increase. And then I want to add, because you may be like, well, how do I know? Track your food, <laughs> like using something like my fitness pal, or if you don't If you don't like tracking, because I know like that can be a touchy subject for as me, someone with like a previous eating disorder, I hate tracking. So I just Mm -hmm. roughly know my, my maintenance now. And obviously I'm not in a prep prep is like such cutthroat, like everything has to be a hundred percent right now. I'm in very much so like a lifestyle phase where I've been slightly losing weight, but eating around my maintenance, I'll just look at nutrition labels once in a while. I'll look up the calories of how much something is once in a while. And I'll just keep that in my mind and implement that. I know I'm not eating over 2,500 and I also know I'm not under eating. Mm -hmm. So you just have to, I feel like it's a trial and error when you are a newbie. It is a lot easier if you just track your food. It is. And that's where it's difficult because you are a newbie and we don't want to like, we've both experienced the dark side of dieting, like mm-hmm. of over tracking and over like focusing on like every yeah. little thing that you eat. But it's really necessary to know how these foods are fueling you, if you're getting enough, if you're getting too little when you first start, because you don't know, you might not know the concept of like calories. Yeah. Like you'll look at something and a nutrition label will literally say like 160 calories. And you're like, okay, cool. You even know but it it's says like, like it five says servings there's per five container. servings per container and you have the whole container. And then you're yeah. like, oh, 160 times five. Fuck. That's all. That's what yeah. I ate. So even if yeah. you just track once a week, that's what I recommend to my clients. Cause a lot of them don't want to become obsessive. And I yeah. absolutely get that. And I'm like, can you just track like one random day out of your week or out of your month and just make sure that every day resembles that day. Mm-hmm. Like you may change one or two things. You might substitute like potatoes for rice or like whatever, but as long as you know how to shift out certain, what well, we're about to get into macros, but like mm-hmm. how to, how to substitute, I think is super important, but you need yeah. to have that foundation and know how much you're even eating before you can start substituting things. Exactly. And that's when the knowledge of knowing the macros comes in is what we'll talk Do about you next. Use my fitness pal? I use my fitness pal, but I'm not tracking right now because I just have a meal plan yeah. for my coach and that's what's I've always easy. preferred meal plans. <laughs> it's just like, okay, I don't want to think about it. When I'm on prep, I don't want to think about it. But when I'm in off season, like I would, I, I do like a mix of both. Like mm-hmm. I'll come up with a meal plan on my fitness pal and I'll have that for the week because exactly, yeah. I can't track my calories every single day. Like that's for me. I'm like, that's ridiculous. I don't need, I don't want to have a different meal plan each day, even though that'd be cool. But with my lifestyle, I'm like, no, that's yeah. annoying. Plus you're such a routine person. Yeah. I feel like that's better. I remember when I was like 16 and getting into competing, I think I had like a two year streak on my fitness pal. I didn't miss a day. Bruh. 
And now I'm like, I I probably have yeah. the app deleted. <laughs> like, that was me my crazy. first two years. You, I, you have to obsess to nuts. a degree to understand what you're doing. And then it becomes second nature. It's like anything yeah. else, like playing any sport. Like you can't like pick up a basketball and be like amazing your first day. But if exactly. you keep doing it, you learn second nature, like how to do something. Yeah. Just like how you were saying with your client and you're like, okay, well, I tracked my, say I had five meals a day and my first meal had this. My second meal was low carb. Like, do we, you listening to this, do you actually know like what macronutrients you're eating in each meal? So like, I know my first meal, I have carbohydrates from my oats. I have protein from the protein powder that's in it. I have low carbohydrates from my berries because I know berries have one of the lowest carbohydrates out of all of the fruits. Mm -hmm. There's fruits that have really high carbohydrates that you don't really know about. Um, And then I'm getting protein and fats from my egg. The fat is from the egg yolk. Yeah. The protein See, isn't it crazy is from the we just egg know white. This like <laughs> I just know these things now because of tracking and stuff, but you won't know it unless you kind of like get the idea from it. And then if I'm like, okay, well, I want to have a more low carb meal in the morning. What I would do, low carb, higher fat, take out the carbs from the from the oats and probably just have maybe the protein and the protein shake and then have two whole eggs. So I have the protein from the eggs and the egg whites. Like this is where you can start and move things around. And this is also where things can get overwhelming, which is Mm -hmm. why I think tracking or again, like getting a coach if you can really simplifies like all of that. Then you don't have to think so extensively. It's very true. Yeah. Then you just like, okay, I'll just do the thing, which is really nice, especially if you're, you have a different lifestyle and like you're really busy and you're just like, just tell me what to do. It's it's a hands-off situation. Or making it for yourself, like do the research, find out what you like, go through all the steps we're telling you and then make your own meal plan and follow that. That's what I did. As long as it's written out, like doing if it fits your macros every single day and going into it blind Mm -hmm. makes things a lot harder to like stay consistent. Yeah. That's why I would just like, okay, this is my calorie count, which I would get. Okay. Now this is what my goal is. Okay. Now how are we going to mix up the macros, which is what we'll talk about. And then, okay, I have that plan. I fit, I filled in all my macros and I'm going to eat that same thing all week, that same meal plan all week, because like you can eat the same thing for like one week and then you could change it the next week and you could go grocery shopping and get something slightly different. Um, there's so many different options and I think we can end it at the very end talking about like what we get at the grocery store mm-hmm. for like proteins, carbs, and fat. So people can start getting an idea of like, what is what we eat like the same things every week. <laughs> Basically. Like you find, I've been you getting find more things. creative. I also, after this section want to talk about all my dietary restrictions because there's so many people out there that can't just eat whatever they want to eat. <laughs> You're so right. And I am one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> She's got the little, the little duty gut. <laughs> She's got the duty gut. Do you want to intro macros? Okay. Because it is quite the topic. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. I mean, macros are literally like proteins, carbs, and fats. So you hear people talking about macros, you hear people talking about protein, carbs, and fats, and you're like, okay, but like, what are these? Most of us know what carbs are. Most of us know what carbs are, but like, I think people think they know what protein is too. This is one of Kendall's tangents. I'll try to make it quick. I saw a TikTok yesterday and it was this girl showing like a vegan, what I eat in the day. Don't tell me that people think that peanut butter is protein. Because that is my. No, it beef. wasn't. It wasn't that. The one. fact that people think that peanut butter is protein <laughs> is a straight up beef I have. But continue. <laughs> for, for hers, all the comments were, "Where's the protein? Where's the protein?" She had to make another video, being like, "Hi, just a reminder. Like, meat is not the only way to get protein." Yeah. And she broke down. She like put the green screen TikTok thing up for those who watch TikTok. Yeah. And she went over her whole day of eating because she didn't include the calories or anything. She was just showing what she ate and she calculated the protein for every meal. And she had like 150 yeah. grams by the end of the day with lentils, with uh-huh. with certain vegetables and fruits that have slightly, even if it's just like an, an extra two grams of protein, yeah. that's a way to get it in as a vegan. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, it was- for <laughs> vegans, there's, there's protein and peanut butter. Like, yeah, exactly. You know so I mean? she did show the peanut butter and was like, mm-hmm. I understand this is high fats, but I also got nine grams of protein for this serving. Exactly. So exactly. When I see like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's like, uh, okay, but how many there's, there's double the fats. Oh to, yeah. It's to, still very much a fat. To, I love peanut butter so much, Me but it's too. not, it's like one of those things that 
you can't just like sit there and eat because the calorie is, count is so it's real freaking, dense. it's so freaking high. That's and good for someone that like who, if your BMR is super high. I had so much peanut butter when I first started <laughs> because I couldn't fill my calories because I couldn't eat enough. Must be nice. But I can eat. <laughs> I can eat a lot of peanut butter. I can eat a whole tub in one sitting. I don't buy peanut butter because I know it's like yeah. dangerous. I literally have like four or five different ones because Zach loves peanut butter. He'll oh, literally no. just sit there, unpeel a banana. Just watch it. <laughs> unpeel a, a banana and he gets the peanut butter and he knifes, like gets a knife and Just slaps bite. it on top. He takes, he puts a <laughs> slop on each bite oh. and he's still so skinny. It's annoying. Me and Zach have that in common. <laughs> Not the skinny part, but the love in the peanut butter. I part. know. It's so he has like a chocolate, a regular, a cashew. Oh gosh, it's so much. Anyways. Um, anyway, back to macros. Yeah. There's a there's a couple different ways. So now that you have your like calorie count and your goal, okay, now we're gonna where are we gonna put these macros? Like how much is gonna go to how many calories are going to fats, carbs, and how many are going to protein? So there's the one rule of thumb that's like kind of general, at least so that you know how much protein to have, which I think is really cool. I'm like, at least we have one <laughs> that we kind of know a general rule right. of how much we're going to have. So that's having one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weigh 120 pounds, you're going to need 120 grams of protein per day. Caveat, you might not be used to eating 120 grams of protein. It might be difficult for you to get that at first. So maybe you can start at hundred or 110. And there's things that you can eat that have higher protein, like protein shakes. You can <laughs> yeah. add it to your oats so that it's like, okay, I'm eating my oats, but it doesn't make it harder to eat. Yeah. Because You're not eating like 10 pounds of chicken because like, exactly. obviously we all know like meat is probably the most standard form of like, this is what protein is. Yeah. Um, but having those other non meat options exactly. makes it so much easier on your digestive system too. You're not as full. Yeah, it's very true. And there's so many things like you saw with that vegan girl is that, that have protein that people don't really realize, but sometimes it comes with, there's a way higher fats or uh, mm -hmm. carbs with it as well. Like one of my favorite things to get proteins in, in the evening when I'm in my off season is uh, vanilla Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. And literally one serving has about like 15 grams of protein. Yeah. And like, that's a lot when you're struggling to get your protein count in. Hummus too. Hummus. Chickpeas in general have a lot of protein. Really? I love those. Yeah. I had no idea. I get these little like chickpea snacks from like CVS. If I'm like in between clients and don't mm -hmm. have time to like stop for real food. Cause I feel like they're healthy ish compared to other snacks I could get. And they're like 40 grams of protein for the whole bag. And it's just these like I think dried out chickpeas. Damn. Yeah. Life hack. <laughs> That's cool. Exactly. Same with like certain veggies, like edamame yeah. is pretty high in protein. So like there's other ways to get yeah. it. Our friend Erica is vegan and she made me a chickpea chicken salad, like a fake chicken salad. It was the best thing ever. Really? It was amazing. It was so good. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> she taught me how to make it and it was Our, really good. I think we're seeing her this weekend. Yeah, we're going we'll to We'll too. have to make it. I miss her. Um, also considered in finding out what you should be eating macro wise, because first off, I will say it makes it like f almost fun to like, it's kind of like a puzzle, right? And you it now is. have like the full puzzle is how many calories you need to eat. And you can kind of like plug in like how much of that is carbs, fats, and protein. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier is I found out by doing an actual test that I burn a lot more fats in my day than I do carbs. So it was exciting to me to be like, oh, I can implement more fats exactly. and take some carbs out. Like I was excited for that. I know some people might be the opposite and you want yeah. more carbs. So that might be hard for you to hear, but it is cool how like doing different macros can give you different results, even if you're That's end calories True. is the same. Um, what I do think we need to talk about is body types. Yeah. Um, this is one thing that Zach used a lot with his coaching and there's the three different body types because the three different body types kind of work better on certain macro breakdowns. So for example, there's the endomorph, which is a rounder body type. This doesn't mean like you're fat or overweight. You're just a little bit rounder, maybe blockier shaped. You probably gain weight more easily yes. than you do lose it. Yes. And a better... Bra uh, macro breakdown is higher fats and lower carbs and moderate protein. <clears> like <throat> this is me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a mesomorph, which is an athletic body type, which is me. And you put on muscle a lot easier, but you have like a well-rounded breakdown of each macro. Like mm -hmm. I don't have too high of fats. I don't have too high of carbs. Everything is basically kind of like even -ish. I will say that actually is me. <laughs> like, even is though it? I found out I burn more fats, like I, I have an avocado with like some of my meals, but my fats aren't crazy high. Yeah. They're probably like 60 grams on like a high day. To me, that's so high. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, I hear people like in their 60s and 70 grams, but like 60s, like a really high day for me. That's awesome. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Fats do taste the best. They, in my opinion, they yeah. Taste, they do taste They the are best. like the most calorie dense, so you don't actually get a lot of qual- quantity. You just get a lot of That's why we were talking grams. about the olive oil. Like yeah. literally like one tablespoon of olive oil is so much. Like on one of my meals, I have seven grams of olive oil. Mm-hmm. Like seven grams only because it is and it's still so a little, Yeah, it's still a lot. And it adds like a crap ton of flavor to that meal. <laughs> and then we have an ectomorph. This is the kind of person that's like, very skinny. You see them eating a bunch of food and it seems like they never gain weight. They could be like considered the quote unquote skinny fat. Mm-hmm. And you've, you, you've either heard people say that about themselves or you've, you know, a person like that. Like for us, it's our videographer and, um, podcast editor, Ian, yeah. he can eat literally so much food and never gain weight. And it's hard for him to put on muscle and put on weight. Cause he has to eat so much yeah. food. Um, it's like, slightly jealous of this person but then also i can imagine that's really difficult yeah. it's like grass is always greener on the it other is. side with I, this stuff. I i'm fine with where i'm at <laughs> i like being a mesomorph and there are ways to you our, our metabolisms change on their own anyway especially as we get older it usually slows down um but for some people your body composition might just change like i definitely used to be more of an endomorph like i could tell you all day like i cannot lose weight it is so hard for me to lose weight i put on muscle and fat really easily and that's always been true until about like a year or two ago and i think it's because like I'm an adult woman now and my hormones yes. are different and I'm getting a little older and I have more muscle mass on my frame. So now I do fall more into a mesomorph because mm-hmm. now I can lose fat pretty easily if I want to also put on size pretty easily if I want to. So mm-hmm. I think it comes with training. And I think I know a lot of endo or sorry, ectomorphs, which is the naturally skinnier people. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of them that have trained their metabolism now to start putting on muscle. And once you start putting on muscle, it's easier to continue that trend. I think it's just about starting and kind of conquering that like, yeah, you're going to be like really full by the end of the day for like several months, but then eventually your body's going to catch up that like, you're not going to stop doing that. So you you guys haven't guessed is that the, basically the ectomorphs are the people that can literally eat a bunch of food. They work high on, they work better on the higher carb, higher carb, moderate fat, moderate protein. Our friend Alyssa is one of those. Mm -hmm. She literally can cut, get shredded like that, but she's eating so many calories on her um our friend uh, Bree is also like that little yep. Bree um they can <laughs> little eat Brie. they're I literally hate them so much but I love them their uh, physiques are just perfect year round and you're like what the heck but they're they're just built to be leaner and then they have worked so hard to put on muscle yes, mass and they have to eat so much food like yeah I, the one struggle that I hear from both of them is that like they're eating, they're trying, they're struggling to eat so much food. But then I remember there was a show that me and Alyssa did together. Um, the one where we both went pro Mm -hmm. and I was literally eating nothing leading up to my show. And she's sitting next to me with like buckets of, (laughs) of Jasmine rice eating it. And I'm looking at her like, I think that's a testament enough that like nothing is like one fits it, one it really, one size fits all yeah that's it that's, <laughs> that's the, thing. the word um uh, just to relate it to those watching if you know who laura lee is um yes. the bikini pro i believe she plays second at this last olympia i'm so bad at keeping up with bikini she plays she's one of the top three in the last last okay. one but i don't think she did as well this okay year. either way like she's very known for her like insane glutes insane physique like she she gets so shredded um and I've always loved her physique. And I was listening to the Bikini and the Brain podcast and they were breaking down because he's friends with her coach where she was like force feeding that peak week, like three, 4,000 calories a day type of force feeding because she has such a fast metabolism that like she could go on and like, of course, Bikini looks for like a smaller frame, but they don't want you to look like she still needs malnourished. To be, um, you need to be full. Yeah, her muscles still yeah. need to be full. So she had to eat so much. I, I'm definitely like butchering the actual amount, yeah. but she was like force eating but carbs going into eating a show. like so little going into a show and then having to have that much Mm -hmm. your your stomach's literally not even prepared for it just so that you can get that fuller look yeah there are a ton of people out there that are like that and it's like yeah it seems really cool and really fun but you know there's a dark side the grass is always greener yeah you're right (laughs) yeah um but yeah that's kind of like the macro breakdown and the different kind of body types so you can take that into consideration if you'd like to also if you just want to kind of guess (laughs) Because you can put that, okay, I'm 120 pounds. Here, I'm going to go and I'm going to set my calories to being, or my um, 
protein count to be in 120 grams of protein. Then you can kind of fill in where are my carbs going to go? Where are my fats going to go? Yeah. And you can do it that way. Or you can literally just go off of like a sp- your specific body type. Yeah. If you're someone that really struggles to pack on muscle and you want to bu- want to build some muscle, you're like, crap. Maybe you need a little bit more carbs and maybe a little less fats. Same I thing think goes for the rest everything of them. with nutrition is trial and error. Yeah. You need to actually stick to a certain meal plan or macro plan or whatever it is for, like you said earlier, at least like three weeks. Mm-hmm. Because if you bounce around like two days eating 2000 calories, oh, I'm not losing weight. I'm yes. going to drop it to 1400. And now you're still not losing weight because because it's only been a day. So now you drop it even lower. Now you're at 1100 and you're not eating enough. And now your metabolism is going into that starvation mode. Like give things time, give it time to play out. Give it a few weeks. It also could be water. You also could be just now entering to the gym as you're starting this nutrition journey. And now your body just needs to like balance out. Now your, your stress hormones are higher and now your, your water intake is not high enough or whatever. Like it could be so many random factors. Just stick with it for Mm -hmm. a few weeks, see how you do. Mm -hmm. And then if you're like, okay, it's been a month and I'm still not losing weight. Let's drop 150 calories. Mm -hmm. You don't have to then drop like a thousand. You don't have to slash them so fast because the faster that you slash them, the very, the, the quicker you're going to have like no calories left. Mm -hmm. So a little at a time is super good. It's like, for me, I would do like one calorie slash, and I would do it for two weeks straight being on point with that same calories, the same macro breakdown, because usually in two weeks you'll lose maybe like a pound Mm -hmm. or sometimes people who lose weight a lot faster, they will lose more than that. And then, you know, okay, if I'm losing weight too fast, then I actually don't need to be cutting this many calories. Maybe I can just go back to the calorie count that I did have and just stick to training and still losing weight that way. That too. Like so many people are like, okay, I, 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 took my 2000 calories. I want to lose weight. So now I'm eating 1800. Mm-hmm. I'm losing weight. So now I need to drop lower. No, no. no you if can you're literally seeing stay results, there. just stay where you're at. Literally. Until either you plateau or if like you have an event, like a wedding or a bodybuilding show or whatever, where you have such a, a constraint time, then yeah, maybe drop it a little lower. Exactly. But if you're seeing results, why are you messing with the system? Exactly. Exactly. That That's bothers like me. <laughs> one of, that is one of the biggest tips that I learned once I started coaching people. Um, and Zach was helping me a lot, like with learning extra things um, that my clients would be losing weight. And then I would be like, well, what do I do next? And he would be like, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and he, Hands and off, I'm like, just really? Doing what you're doing. And he's like, yeah. He's like, if they're losing weight, this is really good. What you want to do is see how long they can ride out this calorie count because we don't want them to like do more physical activity than they need to or eat less calories than they need to. So it's a really good thing. If you're just continuously losing weight, like slower, maybe like a half a pound to a pound a week, that is really good. Yeah. But like, especially the fact that we're viewing this as like a long-term lifestyle thing. mm -hmm. Like there is no rush. Like by the end of the year, you're going to hit your goal. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't just plummet your calories, plummet your calories and give up or try something new, then try something new, then try something new. That's why, you know, some of the easiest ways to do this is literally just to fast track and get a coach. But if you can't, these are the steps that you can go through because it's still really good information to learn. Do you want to talk about our food? Yes. So I wanted to go into the last thing and that is basically like our style of eating, like how we eat. And basically it's kind of the bodybuilder style of eating. You'll see a lot of bodybuilders and they're like eating five to six meals a day. And you're like WTF. My mom's literally like, how do you do that? Oh my God. Cause she can barely get two to three meals in a day, Mm -hmm. which I totally understand. And just because we eat this way doesn't mean that everybody else has to eat this way, but it's literally like a grazing style of eating to where That's you're such a good term because grazing. I'm such a grazer. Moo. I hate meals. Like I, I definitely eat way weirder than you. So you can go into like mm. your habits first. And then like my eating habits are so bizarre yeah. that like my poor boyfriend is like, what are you eating? Or what are you doing? Like the concoctions I make and like how often I eat, it's just like, I'm not the normal. She's a sniggity snacker. (laughs) I'm such a snacker. If I could go every day by just on snacks and like no real sit down and eat with a fork. Yeah. I also eat everything with my hands. I also rip everything I eat. She does I have a lot of really weird eating. She eats like a, like kind of like a little like squirrel. 
<laughs> I think like it weirdly goes back like here's some like trauma dumping but I think like my mom and like we've talked about this in like the binge episode that we did but she was very much of the, the type of person that was like oh you're eating again yeah. oh you're having another meal my mom so I would too. run into the kitchen when like no one was in the Me kitchen too. I would rip something real quick run away and eat it and so that, like, I think that became my habit is like hiding sneak little yeah. bites of food instead of sitting down and eating you're so right it's I didn't weird. <laughs> I, I knew that but you just like unlocked another memory in my brain where I was I did that to where like closet yeah eating. It, you, you were like you were like sneaky about yeah, it you know which, exactly. is, which is not good you don't need to be sneaky about your food <laughs> no 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 need it's i think okay. i have a healthy habit with it now it's just how i prefer to eat but i'm definitely not like closet eating closet. anymore <laughs> in the closet in the dark in the corner so. i think that's where that term comes no one's from. gonna find me but yeah anyway. so we eat like in a grazing style where it's like little Small portioned meals five or six times a day. Um, the reason that I personally like this is because it keeps your metabolism going throughout the day because digesting literally takes a lot of your body and you burn calories when you're digesting. So my body is continuously digesting. I'm continuously getting energy. Yeah. I'm not like spiking in the morning, then dropping really low, then spiking in the evening. Um, that's how I felt when I first was eating. And of course I wasn't eating quality calories, yeah. but I would spike and then I wouldn't eat for such a long time. And then I'd like well, binge you, in the night. Get, if you eat to the point of feeling like physically uncomfortable and like so full, mm -hmm. it takes so long for your body to then be like back at a state in that same day where you're like, oh, I'm ready to eat again. Yeah. Versus if you just split that meal up into like two or three smaller meals, mm -hmm. like then you can just continuously eat. It's also, yeah. I think better at like satiating that part of our brain that like wants to eat, especially if we are in a cutting phase and your like calories are lower. Yeah. Looking forward to like, well, I get to eat again in a few hours. It makes it easier. Exactly. Like I literally had my breakfast right before this. And then when we get done with this podcast, I'm going to go have my second meal, which mm -hmm. is usually at like 11 a.m. ish or so. And then I have four more meals after that. <laughs> six meals a day. Um, I will also say with all of my digestive issues, which like just to break them down slightly, gluten intolerance, we think now I got the test two days ago. I need to tell you a little story time about that too. Cause I mm -hmm. fainted during blood work and I've never fainted before. What? It was literally the scariest thing ever. And also so embarrassing because I literally, I had, I, I won't go like super into it right now. I'll tell you off pod, but, but basically I passed out and I was just like apologizing as I was like, I think I'm fading out. I'm so sorry. And I'm just like, <gasps> I'm sorry. Out. I think I'm done. <laughs> she was like asking me what my name was. I like really had to think to like Wait, did her. you not eat it? Oh, well, did you do you it know, fasted? No, you had to do it okay. fasted and I had to give so many vials because we're trying to figure out what's wrong. So we were testing for multiple digestive things, also blood sugar, mm -hmm. which like that was the issue, which I'll tell you about, um, which I think is a testament of like, hey, yeah, I have low, low blood sugar mm -hmm. or I probably wouldn't have passed out. Yep. <laughs> um, where was I going with that? Oh, I think we have, I think I have lactose intolerance. So I've been oh. gluten-free and dairy-free for a while now and eating small meals is like, everything any doctor I've ever seen has recommended because yeah. when you have digestive issues or literally anyone's digestive tract, it is a lot easier for your body to break down smaller portions versus like a mm -hmm. giant meal can lead to like actual health issues. Yeah. So yeah, it's just I know it, that's a it huge is, tangent, but <laughs> but you're right. Like it is a lot and it helps doing that many meals of day because of, you know, these other factors that we were talking about, but we'll eat every like two to three hours mm -hmm. to kind of like fit that in. But you'll start to see like, this is a really difficult pattern of eating for people that aren't used to it first, but literally once our, we put our clients on it, they start getting hungrier, hungrier, and they can't wait for each meal, which is really good because that shows that your metabolism is being spiked, which is good because yeah. that promotes weight loss. And, um, what was it? Oh, basically you, you're, burning calories and digesting food throughout these meals. Like I'll, I'm already getting hungry right now to get to my second meal. Cause I, so different am for on me it. because I do, once I start eating, I eat every few hours, but I've been intermittent fasting too, because again, for my digestive tract and just for my mental health, I told you, I think like two episodes ago that I like to work out fasted if I can. Mm -hmm. So I like taking my whole morning. I usually, I don't have like a set time. I'm not like purposefully like, 16 hour window eating like or whatever it is because I don't even know which is sad um but I just like don't eat until like probably around noon every day and then I'll eat every few hours but I like having my morning fasted I feel a lot better body wise yeah. my digestive tract it gives me time to like wake up before I start 
stuffing my face. Exactly. Like this morning, it was actually difficult because I woke up a little bit later. So I wasn't as hungry fast enough. Like usually I wake up at like 6 a.m. and I go do my cardio whole routine and that. And then I come home and I'm really hungry because I've been up for a couple hours and I did physical activity. So I didn't do that this morning. So I woke up and I was kind of like force feeding my food down. I was like, ooh, man, that's <laughs> yeah. a little bit difficult. But now my body's like, okay, let's go. But again, this is the style of eating that we eat. This is not the style of eating that I eat all the time when I'm in my off season. Yeah. Maybe I do four or five meals a day. Um, but when I'm in season, it's always the six meal a day kind of deal. Yeah. Um, this doesn't mean that you have to eat this way whatsoever. There's super, um, I want to make that super clear because everybody has a different lifestyle. You know, you might not physically be able to bring six meals pre-packaged to work. Yeah. You know, I would literally bring my meals in little Ziploc baggies, six Ziploc baggies a day when I worked at the salon and I would have them all and I'd have them labeled. I still do that now on prep. It's but just easier with your lifestyle now. Yeah, I can, I can do that. I have the ability because I'm home most of the day, yeah. but I also think like a reminder that like even our eating habits change all the time. Like yes. for years, I never even had fruit in my diet because I was like competitive bodybuilding and hearing like I was trying to do this all by myself when I was like 16 and I heard like how high carb and high sugar fruits are. And I like learned in like health class that like sugars metabolizes fat. So I was like, oh, I'm never eating sugars again. Yeah. So like even to the point of fruit, which is like such a mm -hmm. healthy sugar for you, like, yeah, don't eat like, yeah. 10 apples a day, that's a ton of carbs, a ton of acid, a ton of sugar. But like, even like implementing those little things, like it took me until like a year or two ago to realize that I can eat those things. Yeah, My coach so. literally has pineapple as my post-workout meal with like my uh, carbs and my protein. Spikes so that I can insulin. Yeah, probably, so like yeah. I need, and I didn't realize like, why does he do that? Until now I'm like, oh, he's, he's genuinely putting like those kinds of, nutrients around my workout so that when I can go home, I'm like really replenishing with yeah. carbs and with the sugar from the fruit. Yeah. Um, I think it's easy to get caught up in like low calorie, fat free, yeah. sugar free. Like it's so easy to be like, oh, that's the healthy choice. But like in reality, sometimes like the natural form of all of those things are better for you. It's very true. It's, it is very true. Even though I'm somebody that loves the zero calorie, the zero sugar things, but I always did, but I'm yeah. starting to, but change. if you're somebody that has like digestive problems, it's probably the worst thing that you can do because there's so much extra things that are added to it, that it also can make it really difficult for you to figure out like what's going on. Yeah. Um, I remember at a certain point in prep that my stomach was not reacting well to um, a very specific kind of energy drink. And it was my, it was the Alani new cherry slushy one. And it was my favorite. And my stomach just started rejecting it because of whatever, you know, artificial sugars and things in yeah. it. So I had to take it out and then I wasn't bloated and I felt better. Yeah. You know? And for me, I found out it was egg whites. Like after my prep, I found out if I took eggs out entirely, like my digestive tract was a lot less bloated. So yeah. I think it's like trial and error, not only with your diet, as far as like calorie intake, how often you eat, what you're eating, what your goals are, but also specific foods. Exactly. Like what makes you react? What doesn't, what, whatever you digest really well, stick to those things. I realized for me, like foods like poke, sushi, like just fish and rice that are very basic yeah. do so well for my digestive tract, Same. way better than like beef, chicken, or like pasta, like anything heavier. Yeah, I can't do heavier. those are like leaner, leaner and cleaner. <laughs> yeah. Let's say that leaner and cleaner, <laughs> which again, like someone else might not digest it. Someone fish else well. might you be never know. way better. Like for example, we've talked about this a little bit on the podcast, but I'll mention it here since we're talking about like digestive stuff, but there are a bunch of tests out there that you can do to figure out what your body responds to. Well, and I've done one every single year that I go into prep and it's Viome. V-I-O-M-E. We'll put it linked down below as well. We've already linked it in a couple of other podcasts, but you literally send it a stool sample, tells you what your body responds to well, what it doesn't. Literally, it gives you a list of like, these are your superfoods, these are your okay foods, these are your minimize, and these are your no-go. And what's crazy is that you might be eating something that's very healthy or seemingly very healthy, but maybe sweet potatoes work really well for me, but Kendall reacts, um, it, her sweet potatoes are on her, like make me minimize, yeah. like she can only have this many a day. So even though there's healthy foods out there and you might be thinking that you're eating healthy, you're like, why do I feel so bloated? Why do I feel so sluggish? Because some of these healthy foods might not just, 
um, digest well in your specific gut. So Literally if you were able me. to do that. <laughs> when ahead. I did this test, my, I could scroll for 10 minutes on my minimize list and oh. avoid list. Mine was pretty small, but it was very surprising. I was like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. I was like. I found out cashews, which like I love like snacking on nuts. And it was like the absolute like avoid. And I was like, dang. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. There was one more. <laughs> I was thing. like, was there another test? I've also done the Everly Well. If you don't want to like go and get like properly like intolerant tested at your doctor, because mm. I know like can be more expensive, time consuming, whatever. Everly Well, which I know they sell at Target, and I think you can also order it online. We could also link it below. Mm -hmm. um, I think the intolerance test, you just prick your finger and oh. you like put it on like where you're supposed to put it. You send it in and it runs like most food allergies oh, that's through your cool. blood. Yeah. So that's how I found out I was originally uh, allergic to gluten. I don't think I realized the extent until I did it through my doctor, but it still like was accurate with like, Hey, these are red flags for you. Yeah. At least you know something. Yeah. Like, okay. I'm just yeah. gonna stay clear of that. Yeah. Bitch. And I will say both of those tests took a while, but the Everly well was faster, less extensive. The Viome took like a few months to get back, I think, but yeah. was like super in depth. On yeah. Everything. It literally tells you like, even in like the minimized list, it tells you like, you can have this, but this is how much you can have a day. Mm -hmm. So you can have sweet potatoes, but you can only have half a cup a day. If you have any more, you yeah. probably are going to feel a little off. It also gives you like supplement advice to like fill say, in yeah. areas. Which that our next missing. gym girl basic is on supplements. Yes. So get ready for that. Already one. working on that. One. <laughs> and then I think lastly, I wanted to kind of go over like what our grocery list is for each thing. So like, what are your go-to proteins that you eat throughout the week? Recently, a lot of fish. Yeah. Um, also with the higher fat, a lot of like salmon, um, a lot of Turkey. I, I've been implementing a little more red meat. I used to never eat red meat at all. And now even when I do, I prefer ground beef over steak. Cause I think steak's just a little harder on my body. It's a little heavy. Yeah. I like it. I love how it tastes. I, I just, I will only have that like maybe once a month as like a, a treat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, mostly turkey and fish right now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes chicken, sometimes beef. But. My favorite like grocery store turkey is the Jenny O's turkey, mm -hmm. that brand. That's my favorite. I don't <laughs> know why it tastes different. It hits different. That's the one I get. It's good. Yeah. I order all mine from Mega Fit Meals, Code Julia Renee. <laughs> to save Little but plan. literally they they just mail it to me by the pound and it's just so easier so I don't have to cook it but the ones that I'm eating right now are cod and shrimp for my lean and then for my fatty it's salmon and beef but I never have the salmon because I don't I don't know if the, if the salmon isn't cooked like I love it to be cooked like crispy mm -hmm. other than that it kind of makes me i don't like cooked salmon i like raw salmon yeah it's, i prefer if i could have yeah. sushi every meal i would have sushi yeah it's weird maybe i could do that, that <laughs> you for, could i could do like a raw sushi with my rice but, i live literally across from like an h mart now which is like an asian food market here i love that h mart no literally i like will go and get sashimi like once a week i freaking love that h -mart. <laughs> i know which one you're talking about that's yeah. my fave it's super cool but yeah, that's what I'm having for my proteins. Now, what do you usually do for like your fats? Like what are your favorite fats? Avocado. Avocado. Avocado is my number one. I'm also a big sauce person. So if I could like use my sauce as macros, I know most sauces like ketchup and what's another normal one? Like hot sauce. They're, well, hot sauce is really low calorie, but they're usually like carb based. But I have link up again, H Mart's right by me, spicy mayo. If I can like even incorporate just like a little dollop of that into my meal, it like makes mayo. the whole meal so much better. Especially spicy mayo. It's yeah. like so flavorful. Which like, I will say so calorie dense. If you are cutting, I would not recommend it because it is mm -hmm. very easy to eat like hundreds of calories worth. Um, but I've just been keeping it in my fridge and I'll have like a tiny bit of that. Um, actual... Fat sources though, mainly just avocado. I'll do like nuts. I, I'll keep like peanuts and like, yeah, my diet is so boring. Yeah, mine's really boring. <laughs> like the only fats that I have really in my diet right now, at least are like avocado and like olive oil. And oh then, yeah. I've been cooking yeah. with olive oil for the first time, like ever yeah. recently. I don't cook with it because of the extra Well, you have to be added. more precise. Yeah, you have to be yeah. more precise. But I don't I, I add now. mine like on top of one of my meals. Those are some things that... I can do if I need those extra fats. But other than that, it's like, I don't know. On my off season, I really like hummus. There's mm -hmm. it's a little, it's a little fatty a little fat. nuts, maybe a scoop, like a little tablespoon of peanut I'm a butter big, like, for my breakfast. Chips and guac person as like a yeah. snack. I've like finally gotten to the place where I think I can like proportion things out correctly for myself versus like old me definitely would have like over eight keeping those snacks in my the whole House? bag and the no, whole avocado literally, thing. Which like I still do sometimes, yeah. but like, it's fine. Um, 
but yeah, I think like having, I, again, I'm such a snacker that it's like, are it is those little things or like I'll reserve like higher fats for like, if I'm having like maybe like a ice cream bar later that day, like a halo top, like something like that, which I can't do now because of the lactose intolerance thing. But <laughs> they also, I think they make a vegan version. I'll find it. There's tons of them. There <laughs> yeah. are tons of them. There's a ton of options, but like, I Ask think, Erica. I think I reserve my snacks for like the higher fats. Yeah. yeah. That's your favorite. That's your favorite. Yeah. That's what I look so forward like, to. Not? If I can have that like little portion implemented in my plan, why not? And then carbohydrates. My carbs are really boring. It's mostly just rice, mostly brown rice too. Cause I was doing white rice for a while and I felt like it was harder on my digestive tract, which the volume did tell me that. Yeah. Um, also recently just to like spice up my meals, rice paper. Have you ever cooked with those? No. It's like, you know what like spring rolls have like yeah, the I little clear covering. Stuff. So I finally like bought some again at H Mart. H Mart is very much so influencing my diet yes. these days. Um, so I'll make everything a spring roll. Like literally <laughs> I'll like cook like, turkey and rice and I'll put it in a rice paper that and it's like way more fun yeah it's added carbs but like it also like keeps me excited to like cook and eat um, you need to make a video on how you do that I put should it on Instagram. I've been doing a lot of more f like fun recipes I, I did like eggplant parm the other day which is like mostly carbs but mm -hmm. it's still like tastes really good <laughs> it's like a veggie base but it is high carb because you use like breading and stuff um you're turning I do, into wifey no literally like uh, cooking for him is like all i look forward to so i'm like i found this new recipe like i'm gonna make it <laughs> i baked brownies the other day i'm like i can't even eat these but here you go and you have <laughs> baked brownies with your full face of makeup on no, literally. your hair blow dried in a little skirt <laughs> honey no i baked literally. you brownies while you were at work yeah I hope he knows how, how amazing I am. That is amazing. <laughs> um, but also a lot of gluten-free pasta. I just yeah. love pasta. If I can have it in my diet, I will. Um, they might need to take it out of my diet because of my digestive health right mm -hmm. now. But I do love can me some pasta. Can have the chickpea pasta? Actually, I think one of those has like a pea protein in it, which I'm not supposed to have. So I have to like fully look at what flour it's made out of. So rice flour is the best Your for life me. It seems hard. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I basically have rice in different forms. Yeah. I either have like rice, rice pasta, or like rice, rice cakes, paper, <laughs> rice. Rice cakes are probably my biggest form of carbs. Yes. If I can snack on my macros, I'd rather snack them than eat yeah. them. My favorites are, I mean, at least when I'm on season, the it's usually just like sweet potato and white rice. That's usually- I've been doing a lot of red oat, potato oats, yeah. recently. I will say, okay, this is like very, like I'm not a bodybuilder right now. Yeah. When I'm a bodybuilder, rice, sweet potato, turkey, chicken, yeah. some lean fish like tilapia, um, and then my fats would maybe be avocado. Mm -hmm. That's what I used to only Mine's eat. Mine's boring. Yeah, when? I get to be like excited now. <laughs> yeah, here, Kendall's has the fun one. I have the very, very boring one, but those are my faves. I do love eat my carbs too when I'm in off season is the Dave's killer bread or killer. I, I like his, the bagels. That, yeah. I eat the whole bagel. Gluten. It has lots of protein in it for, for a bagel at least. And I'm like, protein. Oh, I just started carbs, doing bam. Kodiak cakes finally made a gluten Kodiak free. Kodiak cake is my fave yeah. also for carbs and protein. I've been doing chocolate chip pancakes in the morning. I'm such not a health my influencer My mouth is anymore. watering. I I'm need so to get sorry. off of this I'm so pod. Sorry. I'm over here like have to go Reminder, have you hear me say I eat these foods and I have so many people that are like, I saw you eat pizza. Like when I eat these things, like the pizza I'll make myself is like the most low calorie, like disgusting pizza you could ever have. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, it looks good. But like, I still have such that like diet mentality in my head that I will never just like order Domino's. Like that doesn't happen. Like I, I get the healthy version oh, of everything. Oh, I order Domino's. <laughs> Yeah. I will feel like a refeed, but like also like, I don't know. It's so, it's so, it's such a weird topic for me. Cause I do have people that come up and they're like, all I ever see you do is like posting candy and like pizza. And it's like, you can implement those things in small quantities. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I had that one pizza, but you didn't see like the five meals of like well, you lettuce and chicken I made. Do a day in a life of <laughs> yeah, eating of Kendall so I people know. Do. That's true. That's yes, true. You need Cause to I don't share show more. the boring meals. Yeah. No one wants to see my like. That's little true. rice paper with turkey in it. Yeah, if I did my my full day of eating right now, people like, oh, that's the same one as the other one as no, the other literally. one as the other one. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but this one has more carbs. This one has less. Yes, there's uh, olive oil on this one, but you don't see it because it blends in. <laughs> But yeah, like when I'm on prep, it's very boring. Yeah. I feel the opposite like recently where like my diet has never been this diverse. So it's definitely like feels weird. I almost feel like very like how can I be eating this stuff? But it's mm -hmm. working and mm -hmm. like I've been dropping weight. So <laughs> again, I'm not like trying to lose a ton of weight. I'm just like kind of maintaining. So. Damn. 
O to be Kendall right now. No. <laughs> Everyone's like, hey, you were just in off season. I you know. had your fun too. I had my fun and now it's go time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that was basically Jim Girl Basics. Yes. It was basically <laughs> Jim Girl Basics. What's that little kid that says, um, appar- apparently, apparently. That is, I do that at least oh, once a day. I love Apparently, it. this apparently. was Jim Girl Basics and don't listen to anything Kendall eats because <laughs> her diet's freaking weird. No, listen to what Kendall eats. That's just proof that you can eat fun things. Yeah, and yeah. I think it is. Things. It's balance, like fully balanced. If you have a show, a wedding, or a vacation, like something with an end date, take it more seriously. But if this is the rest of your life, like implement the foods you love. Like if I could never have gluten-free pasta again, I would cry. Yeah. Kendall <laughs> would just eat snacks for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I do. Some days, and that too, like some days I do still under eat. And mm-hmm. it's like not super intentional, but with my digestive issues, I'll just like, I'll like realize it's 4 p.m. and all I had was like a rice cake today. Yeah. And then I do try to like eat some more calorie dense foods, but like not every day is perfect either. Yeah. So I agree. I agree with that. Every day is going to look a little different. Well, Unless you're a bodybuilder, then it won't. <laughs> then, <laughs> then every day the is literally like a carbon copy of the day before. Yeah. <laughs> Except for today, I have a rest. But that is Gym Girl Basics. Nutrition Basics. Hope you guys enjoyed learning a little something, something. And as always, we love you all so much. And you're more powerful than you think. Bye. Bye.